Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Friday, November the 6th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah chapters 8 and 9. My joy is gone, grief is upon me, my heart is sick within me. Behold, the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay is taken hold. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slaying of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a traveler's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them, for they are all adulterers, a company of treacherous men. They bend their tongue like a bow, Falsehood and not truth has grown strong in the land, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, declares the Lord. Let everyone beware of his neighbor and put no trust in any brother, for every brother is a deceiver and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves committing iniquity, heaping oppression upon oppression and deceit upon deceit. They refuse to know me, declares the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and test them. For what else can I do because of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceitfully. With his mouth each speaks peace to his neighbor, but in his heart he plans an ambush for him. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord? And shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? I will take up weeping and wailing for the mountains and a lamentation for the pastures of the wilderness, because they are laid waste, so that no one passes through. And the lowing of cattle is not heard, both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled and are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a lair of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitants. Who is the man so wise that he can understand this? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined and laid waste like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? Our writing this morning is by St. John Chrysostom, from his homilies on the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus directs his speech to the city in this way, also being mindful to correct his hearers, and says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, what does the repetition mean? This is a way of expressing his pity for her and bemoaning her and greatly loving her. Like a woman ever loved by him, but she has despised the one who loved her, and therefore she is on the point of being punished. Being now about to inflict the punishment, he pleads with her. This is also the pattern of the prophets, who said, Turn to me, and she returned not. Then having called her, Jesus tells of her blood-stained deeds. You who kill the prophets, and stone those who are sent to you, how often would I have gathered your children together, and you would not? In this way, he is also explaining his own dealings with her. 
Not even with these things has he turned her aside, nor withdrawn his great affection toward her. But it was his desire even so, not once or twice, but often, to draw her to himself. For how often would I, he says, have gathered your children together even as a hen gathers her chicks, and you would not. He says this to show that they were scattering themselves by their sins. He indicates his affliction by similitude, for indeed the hen is warm in its love toward its brood. Everywhere in the prophets it is the same image of the wings and in the song of Moses and in the Psalms, indicating God's great protection and care. Joined together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, there, abandoned by all your disciples, you willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner and hung up between two evildoers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, the holy city of Jerusalem rejected the prophets and stoned those who were sent to her, killing your son, the final prophet, sent to redeem her and the whole world from their sins. Through his innocent suffering and death, gather your church into his loving embrace, that we may truly be the body of Christ. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may be. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.